the most macho profession? What do you think, Rick? You used to be a male model. That's pretty macho. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> see, I'd say no. What's the weirdest thing you had to dress up as, uh, uh, you know, being a uh, male model? You were kind of uh, a fashion well, model. Well, um, it's not really something I had to dress up as. I, um, I had to model uh, crotch-enhancing jeans. <laughs> and may I say, <laughs> I'm glad you kept it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I didn't have them on the shoot, so in the end I wore my jeans and then a gentleman stuffed a sock <laughs> that he sort of moulded into a large kind of sausage that snaked down my leg. And then uh, my mum and dad saw it in a magazine. <laughs> what were they doing reading that kind of magazine? <laughs> Worst thing about going to a pop concert? The music. <laughs> no, the worst thing for me about pop concerts is the miming. Yeah, cos you want to see a show, you don't want to see people going... <laughs> <laughs> Get on with it! Bloody sin! <laughs> Have you, have you been to any pop concerts, Craig? I have. I went to Whitney Houston's pop concert. Not the recent one? No, darling, the one that was in Africa, her first visit there, and that was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> because she'd lost her voice. She'd lost her voice? Yeah. What, was your British Airways flying her over there with her? <laughs> <laughs> My friend invited me to a gig at Wembley. I said, yeah, all right, it sounds a bit like it'd be loud and there'll be a lot of people there. <laughs> But I'll go with it. He said, there is a, there's a slight chance you'll get hit with a pint of piss. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going. And he what, was, what, was the, what was the gig? It was Oasis. And he said, sometimes, because it's a lot of people there, so you wee into a glass. Already I'm losing it. But then instead of <laughs> popping it neatly by the side, he said, they have a wee, and then they just... Boom. <laughs> sometimes you get hit with a pint of piss, but it's very unlikely. Like, I need it to be zero chance of getting hit. <laughs> And then people start singing. I don't want you to do it, dickhead. <laughs> I didn't pay 60 quid to come to your house, did I? And hear you sing <laughs> Michael Bolton, but <laughs> I just get terrified of losing my friends. <laughs> it's so big, the gigs, you know? I'm going to get back out there. I'm never going to find him. And then I just, I wouldn't have come on my own, but now I'm on my uh, Proclaimers were good. I enjoyed the Proclaimers. <laughs> they did an the indoor venue with seats, so there's no standing up, but they did new stuff. I haven't come to watch the Proclaimers to see your new shit, have I, lads? <laughs> Do the two. Someone needs to have a word with pop bands about the new stuff. That is the worst thing when they say, and here's one of our new songs. You can hear the whole room go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I hate going to pop concerts because of um, the, the toilet situation for the women, because I'm not a big ad advocate of pissing in cups. So I have to queue for the loose, and I used to, uh, like, sort of push in and say, like, oh, I'm pregnant. But I don't want to push in anymore because I heard, heard a story about a girl who pushed in and got into a porter loo and then the crowd kind of turned feral and they pushed the porter loo <laughs> over with her in it. <laughs> and I don't know if that's an urban legend, but I don't want to risk it. That, that makes me proud to be British. <laughs> You know the Tory party conference when they talk about the British spirit and what it is to be British and coming together as a community? That is the example they should have used. She pushed in the queue, did she? Well, she could be covered in poo. <laughs> Good on them. <laughs> I think what I always find weird at when you go to see a band these days is they have that gap, don't they, between the stage and the audience, and they have those stewards there, these massive, great big blokes in polo shirts, just, and they're not seeing the band. They're, they're staring at the audience. And the idea of how, trying to have a good time with this 18-stone Glaswegian just staring at me. <laughs> uh, he's obviously got a court appearance on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> if you're trying to have fun, if you're in your living room trying to have fun and there's just a big bloke staring at you going, <laughs> you're having fun, are you, son? <laughs> they're all from Glasgow, aren't they, those fellas? Yeah, and they're always lifting people out as well. Yeah. I always think that's... <laughs> is, is there someone in from Glasgow now? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> OK, well, there's, there's an AA meeting just up the road. Let me ask you the worst thing about going to a pop concert. The crowds, darling, the crowds. It's, part, it's to do with the crowds. When it's a very a, specific thing about... When there's a very tall person standing in front of you. That is exactly the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the worst thing about going to a pop concert is standing behind a tall person. Especially if you've gone to see Jedward, because if you're standing behind someone really tall, they could block your shot and you have to kill them both. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so next one. Um, top thing travellers miss when abroad. Is it all the dead celebrities? <laughs> there you go away and you don't know who's died. <laughs> two years later, you're in the pub having a chat and you go, 
Yeah, anyway, so, so and so and so. They go, he's dead. And you go, when? <laughs> Turns out, when you were on holiday. <laughs> yeah, you're sneaky, oh, isn't it? Yeah. That annoys the <laughs> out of me. <laughs> you're from Australia, aren't you? Technically, you're abroad now. Well, I've been living here for 22 years, yeah. so. <laughs> and I have become a British citizen. Well, I need to see your papers and we can yeah. move on. Papers! <laughs> Where are your papers? <laughs> Glenn Goodman, I bet he's not likes to do your papers, doesn't he? He's, he's still in the Home Guard. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine in between takes, him shows, he shows you his ration book. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'll get you sugar, nylons, anything you want. <laughs> what do you miss when you go away, Anna? I, um, I think I misunderstood the question, because I was thinking of travellers. I was going to say caravans and evading <laughs> The top thing they miss isn't Dale Farr. No. <laughs> You probably miss the imperial measurement system. You're probably flummoxed by where's the nearest village? 17 and three quarter fathoms. <laughs> we have kilometres and it's really easy. <laughs> yeah, you've also got euros. Good luck with that. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> worse than recession. I've lived through several recessions, and this is worse than those. Thanks <laughs> <laughs> for bringing it up. <laughs> Is this, is this the worst one, you think? I don't know. I know I'm sure it was worse during the potato famine. <laughs> but uh, in my lifetime, it's not great. I don't know what the modern equivalent would be of a potato famine in Ireland. It would be if Abra Cababra shut down. <laughs> it is a uh, kebab joint where um, I was in it recently and uh, a homeless man was thrown out and he just uh, stuck his head. It's sort of a, a spinning mystery meat type uh, establishment. And the homeless man, a minute later, just stuck his head around the door and went... <laughs> and then just landed this perfect... <laughs> gob onto the thing as it's spun and the guy walks over with the big knife he's like oh god and he just picks the sort of spot like the two inch spot where it landed like there we go now what would everyone like <laughs> taking care of it's about it's about the, the comfort of home your own bed that's the right answer ah yes the top thing travelers miss one abroad is their own bed I hate the way hotel beds can magically turn what was clearly a beautiful, exotic woman the night before into an unshaven oriental man in the morning. 